So today let's try to make some lightnings in my living room. Now that I have my 400 volt supply on my bench, I can power my big high voltage power supply with 8 microwave oven transformers and of course some microwave oven capacitors for resonance. Here's my 400 volt supply, tested using two lamps in series of course. One is not enough. And when I say microwave oven capacitors, I mean a lot of microwave oven capacitors, of course. Those resonance capacitors are going to be in series with the secondaries of the high voltage transformers from the microwave ovens. I basically have two boxes of microwave oven transformers. Four transformers in each box, as you can see. Each box is connected all in parallel and those two boxes are then going to be connected in series, both the primaries and the secondaries. So here is the simplified schematic of it where each of the transformers actually is four transformers in parallel. Basically all four primaries are in parallel and all four secondaries are in parallel. And each of those capacitors is going to be multiple microwave oven capacitors in parallel. Maybe 8, 9, 10 or 11. And those capacitors are usually roughly 1 micro and 2100 volts AC rating. And this voltage is also roughly the secondary voltage of those transformers. And the primaries are 220 volts, 50 hertz. In this one the primary is 230 volts, the newer European standard, but it doesn't make much difference. But in this circuitry the primaries are going to run at just 200 volts. But the input voltage is connected in series with the secondaries, so it's adding to the secondary voltage. I basically get extra 400 volts for free at the output. And microwave oven transformers are designed quite cheapish. To make them smaller and cheaper to make and easier to transport, they are using smaller core, which means that the iron core runs very close to saturation. Those transformers draw a very high current, even with no load, and they also have a very high inrush current. For those reasons it's better to run them at a slightly lower voltage. Those transformers can draw about 2 or 3 amps at their nominal voltage, even with no load. If you slightly reduce the input voltage, the input current with no load reduces very significantly. And it also reduces the inrush current, even though I still may have to put something to reduce the inrush current into it. For example a series resistor which I bypass using a switch after I power it up. Or maybe an inductor here. And I also have to say that the microwave oven transformers have one end of the secondary connected with the core. But it's better to leave it as it is because on this side of the secondary the isolation on the secondary can be quite poor. The other end of the secondary has a better isolation on it. And of course the directions of the windings are so that the input voltage is adding to the secondary, not subtracting. To measure the ratio of the transformers and to check if the voltage is adding or subtracting, it's good to power them using a small AC voltage, for example from a small AC power supply. This one is 9 volts AC. Now the question is, can I turn it on without tripping my 25 amps B breaker? It's a class B breaker, which means that its magnetic or fast tripping threshold is 3 times to 5 times the nominal current which is about 75 to 125 amps for this breaker. At a lower current it trips with a delay, using the slow thermal mechanism with a bimetal. And the second question is how many capacitors I can put in parallel without tripping my breaker. And of course this is definitely not for a continuous operation. And of course I can also try to put some salt to the electrodes to make the arcs brighter orange and also maybe longer. Let's try just three capacitors on each side of it. Can I turn it on using a 16 amp breaker? Well, it runs. Now let's try some arc. Trips my breaker. Just the 16 amp one, not the 25 amps one. Turning on. Fails. And trips. Turning it on is actually a good luck. You have to fit into the maximum point of the voltage where the current is actually zero. 
not into zero crossing of a voltage where the current is maximum. So let's try to put this inductor across the breaker and then turn it on. Now it's on. So let's try connecting it via my special 400 volt socket because I can't trust a switch. It can get welded and I may think it's off and it's not. And it drips. Bloody hell. Now let's try to use an inductor for a startup and a switch that bypasses it. It's starting to be interesting. And the current is when I short it out twelve amps and with an arc. Like 25 amps at most, with the longest arc. This doesn't look bad for just four capacitors on each side. It's just slightly warm. Now let's try five capacitors on each side of it. Power up sequence. And does it trip? Wow! Bloody hell! This doesn't even fit into my view. Nice! Amazing! It's over one meter. Over one meter long. This is dodgy, but absolutely amazing. The short circuit. Just 15 and the arc. 36, but it doesn't trip the breaker in a short run. Now let's check the temperature of the transformers. The primaries are just slightly warm and the secondaries are a bit hotter but still not too hot to touch. The secondary is getting a bit hotter probably because most of the power actually resonates between the capacitors and the secondaries. And this is actually how to get the biggest arcs without tripping the breaker. So it doesn't seem like the transformers are going to overheat anytime soon. The biggest issue is the breaker of course. And of course I'm using those random sunglasses for it because it produces a lot of ultraviolet light. But of course now the question is, can it take six capacitors on each side? So now it's six capacitors on each side of it and now it's going to get completely crazy or trip the breaker. Startup sequence, plug in, switch. Bloody hell. That's completely crazy. And what's the current? Short circuit. And with an arc. It's still not much over 35 amps. No, it's still not too hot to touch and I think those windings are designed for 200 degrees Celsius, so it should be fine. And now 
Should I try seven capacitors? Okay, so it's seven now on each side. Start up. Bloody hell. And the current is short circuit and arc about 40. Still doesn't trip a 25 amp breaker in a short run. Let's try eight capacitors. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, it tripped. Finally, it was too much. The breaker tripped, but when I went to seven and eight capacitors, it was already kind of diminishing returns. From six to seven and from seven to eight, it wasn't much improvement anyway. So let's go back to seven and let's record some more discharges. Let's replenish the salt on the electrode. Can I measure the secondary current using a clamp meter? Now the clamp meter is hopefully isolated from the high voltage cable using this, but just for case, the clamp meter is also isolated from everything else using this bucket. So let's see. Does it get hot? Just warm slightly, the primary is completely fine and the secondary is also not too hot to touch, completely fine. And could it work with my Jacob's ladder? Nothing. Just once, it's too far from each other. So this is my high voltage power supply. It works the best with about 7 capacitors, but there is still some space for improvements. If I had a higher current breaker, I could use even more capacitors here. But of course it would get hot faster. And also the primaries are not getting their full rated voltage, so it could theoretically get even crazier. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course I still plan to make a proper Tesla coil.